In today's video I have another boombox, not exactly a nice classic one this one, it's a sort of, I don't know, maybe mid 90s or something, Senyo, actually got remote for the CD player, got a CD player in it, which doesn't seem to shut too well, and I know you're all wondering why on earth I would buy this thing, but the reason is, it's got this auto reverse, and that's because it's got a fairly rare tension mechanism in it, which is all I really wanted to buy it for, one of their later auto reverse ones. And this one's got the little plastic sort of oscillating lever for the auto stop, which is normally it's a, just a standard non-auto reverse deck is a 1021Z, I think it is. But this one has like two of them because it's auto reverse. And I don't know if I've ever even seen one of these in the flesh before. And I wanted to get hold of one, it's a 10 or 1059 is just a single auto reverse deck and 591 is what they call the one with a second deck attached to it, basically a dual deck cassette player one. Yeah, I can see the little end of the lever on that one. So that's a 5, uh, 1021Z, sorry. And that's the 5, well, 59 or 591 if you include the two of them together. So it's got both that sort of style. I can see the little bottom end of the lever and the little bit on the around the capstan there that I think that actually pivots a bit, does it, in some mode? I'm not sure there's a metal plate there. Then it's got the little pivoting arm. That's got a single black one. That's got a dual grey one. And that's all I really wanted to see. They did say there's an option on this of automatic music search and queue review. So I don't know if I've got anything interesting like that. Probably not. It looks like a pretty basic deck, this thing. I think this thing's meant to work or maybe it had an issue i did try to buy a sanyo shelf system off ebay with the same deck in it and the guy had never sent it to me and that was a bit overpriced so i'm kind of glad he didn't because i got this one with the same deck in it quite a bit cheaper and this is a bit more compact i don't really want an old shelf system maybe i can at least display this somewhere in the garage or something as a boom boxer from a later era now yeah, let's turn it on. Do we have anything? Well, I don't have my power to my bench on. Looks like we've got an AM radio. How exciting. Ooh, and then under I think I've only got one channel. I don't see a balance control yet. We've got a dicky switch or something, but I'm only hearing one speaker going. Sounds like both of them possibly have the amp noise when the power goes to it. Ah, uh, there it is. Dicky switch. Dicky function switch. Well, we've got the other one starting to come in a bit. Yeah, there it is. So, okay, we've got two channels. Guess I might as well check if the CD works. No doubt it'll probably need a bit of a service, if nothing else. And CD. Alright, a bit slow to read. And it's saying zero, so does that mean it's ready to go? It means there's no disc, it's flashing zero on the front. So I think that's a bad sign. I can't remember, like I say, what was meant to work. I don't think this thing was 100% working. Pretty sure it was sold as not working. And they're asking some stupid price for it, but I made them a, what I thought was a reasonable offer since they're including postage. And got the thing. I really didn't want to spend any real money on it, but it's about the only way to get these mechs. One might turn up locally eventually, but there's no guarantee, so I thought, what the hell. Yeah, I don't think we've got any action out of the tape deck. It's got two tape positions, probably here yeah, for high and normal speed dubbing. So this thing's still got power. Well, we've got a direction light. I don't think... Well, you never know. Maybe this has got a switch or something we need to press. No, I can't see anything. I don't think they're that technologically advanced. So we might have to fix this. Or it could be that we don't have any motor action at all. I can hear like, the amp kick in. Yeah, just a bit of a click out of the speaker and nothing else. No sound of a motor or anything. So that's interesting. You usually get at least a motor running, but it will be interesting to have a look at one of these in the flesh. Oh my god, it's full of batteries. Well, that wouldn't help the postage costs at all. Did they actually 
actually work. I wonder. Pull the power cord out, and we should, should be able to see if it. I think it was already in CD mode, and nothing was lit. No, so we've got a heap of flat batteries. At least they haven't leaked yet by the look of it. If they'll come out. Oh, that's handy. We've got a date on these things. 2005-2015. wonder if that's 2015 or something. Be about right if they're flat but haven't leaked yet. At least they're not like some of these energizers and stuff that seem to. We've got 0.6 of a volt in that one, same in that one, 0 0.1, 0 0.6, half a, oh, 0.05, in fact, not even half a volt, 0 0.1, 0.5. They're a bit random, but they're all flat. Oh well, that was nice of them to give me some e-waste to get rid of. Yeah, I don't know when they, I mean, they must still make those Panasonic batteries, I guess, if they, they look, must be fairly recent, I would think, but. Put the back off. And this actual mechanism is still, well not still on there, but there is a archive of the Tanishin website on archive.org that you can look up yourself if you want to, and I think if you just search Tanishin on that site, it gives some links to it. The Wayback Machine or whatever has actually took some shots of it, and over a few different years you can find bits, but they're all pretty much the same I think for each year. And this is one of the ones that's actually on that website, so they've actually got details on what was the Tennyson webs web page. Doesn't have much information on anything. Does have a list of historical mechanism numbers that they supposedly sold, which is short quite a few that I know exist, and includes ones that I've never been able to find. Although I can't read Japanese, so I've had to pretty much guess which make it what what some of the Japanese writing means. I think some mean like car audio, and I just assume everything that has the same word next to it or same characters is car audio, and the other one is like yes CD mechanism, and something else is cassette mechanism. So I sort of had to guess, but it's definitely interesting to have a look and see what mechanisms they have. I think that's how I found this mechanism. I don't think I've seen. Well, I haven't seen one in something, I haven't seen, I don't know if there's any manuals that mention it, there might have been something, some of the manufacturers actually tell you what the mechs in their units are, and something still seems to be holding that, so there must be one in one of these holes, did I undo that one, I thought I undid the middle one but it just didn't come out, yeah that's correct, so now I've got it to come out, feels like something at the top is still Still holding in the middle here somewhere. Normally they're pretty easy to get apart. Ah, uh, there's another one there, so I wonder if that's something to do with it not coming. That is, feels like quite a substantial screw, isn't it? It's only a little one. Hasn't made the slightest difference. Okay, what am I missing here? There must be one in the battery area or something that I've missed. Ah, there they are. I did look down the holes for the handle and could not see it, but because of the amount of dust, there's definitely one down there. There it is, it's one side. I assume one on the other side. I did actually look at that. Oh, there's a cobweb in it. In that. I know I can't see it. And that's the problem, when they're a bit newer, they're not hard to see, but once they're covered in dirt and stuff, been a long time since I pulled one of these sort of units apart and I never did many of them because they really weren't worth the bother most of the time. Well, absolutely filthy of course. Speakers need a clean, the usual story, massive amount of cobwebs. So 
So maybe that's why it stopped working. The spider in there died. The spider that ran it must have carked it. I think, what does someone used to say? The driver died, I think. <laughs> when you found a dead spider or something, it was, that's why the unit stopped working, because the driver died. And there's our little standard TN21Z mech. It's the one with a nicer auto stop, the little oscillating lever there, instead of a tension, little tension arm for when the tape tension goes up. And this one's got the two of them, so this is, and they're not, certainly not the same as that one. I wasn't sure whether they were roughly the same arm or not, but they're quite shorter, got a bigger lobe at the end, and they're quite short compared to that one. has got this big long piece. And yeah, shorter bits of metal here compared to that one, although that one looks kind of, kind of similar. So maybe they're not that much shorter. We've got a fixed, fixed head. I actually had a feeling these had um, rotating heads. I'll have to double check that. Some of these Tanishin mechs come with either a, well they call them different mechanisms, but the whole mechanism is basically the same, but either the head is a dual carcass set one like that one, where you've got the two faces, one for each direction, basically compared to the single face on that one and the other side is just metal. Or they come with a rotating head with a little gear on the base and as the pinch, usually driven off the pinch rollers, I think as it changes direction, it spins 180 degrees each time. So I'm pretty sure I looked these up and it was meant to have a rotating head, but this is what you often find when you look in the real world, that things aren't always what they say. And well, these have actually got, or that one, something I haven't seen. I've got an old label somewhere. And I think I found some online advertising. That little round, round bit with a cross in it is a Tanishin corporate logo, I think. I'm pretty sure that's roughly what their logo looks like. And I don't think I've ever seen that moulded into the plastic before, which is kind of weird why they wouldn't do that. I don't know if there's anything. This is, I think, what they call... Or is it a horizontal deck? Because it's got the straight parts coming out of it. There's a few, I think, two, at least two versions of these decks they mention and there's yeah like they make versions with the levers are bent out so they go the normal way up and you've got a button that you press on the front of the unit down the bottom they've got the straight levers which i think are used both what might be the other ones one of them is used in the horizontal i think some horizontal ones have the little bent up piece on them but they lay them flat and you you press a button at the front so it's almost like the upside down, or the normal one with the buttons at the bottom, the right way up mech, but it's just laid flat on top. And then you've got the ones with the straight um, actuating parts on the buttons, so that the button keeps traveling upwards because the deck's upside down. For some reason, a lot of people favor that as a sort of space saving design, or something like that, probably makes the deck not so wide front to back. And I guess they are kind of convenient like this, because you can use them from above rather than having to fiddle around down the bottom. But I prefer the ones where the deck's the right way up. I always thought they were a little bit classier or something for some reason, just in the way they should be, rather than because all your hi fi decks had the deck the right way up. And this was more just a boombox feature to have them the, the wrong way up. But I think Atashi, besides those little shoebox recorders that were flat. The little mono ones normally are used just for schools and that sort of office work and stuff. I think the only time they use horizontal mix was in those Hitachi boom boxes, which I do have one of those here, which has an earlier Tanishin mech, which I'll get around to doing one day. Now, I think we've got to take... What have we got to do? Oh, yeah, that must lift up and the decks come around it, I guess. Wow, well, easier said than done. They didn't give me much cable here to work with. How do we... How do we get that out of there? This senio is definitely a bit different to work on. Well, that does not want to come apart. Here we go. God, surely there's an easy way of doing that. Maybe I've, I need to take this top bit off. Oh, that is actually loose. Oh, there's you think it is the secret by the look of it. Should have took that off. I forgot that was even loose. Then you can lift that out of this thing. It's full of dust and I think some sort of animal's fur. We've got a Sanyo motor. Well, that's a rare thing. I don't know if Sanyo really made their own motors, which is a 33EA2L12W. Don't know if anything means a date or anything. 12 would be the voltage, I guess. What 
battery voltage to this one. So I've got a CD player. I think they're normally 12 volts. Should tell us on the specs on the back here. DC 12 volts. Yeah, so a lot of the earlier boom boxes were 9 volt motors. But they were the ones without CD players. I think almost all CD player ones, because I think most of the motors in CD players are 12 volt. 2L, I don't know, I don't know why a lot of them have two. Maybe that's the two speed. L is left rotation, so I guess looking at the front of the motor, it should go counterclockwise. Now let's see if we rotate these capstans. That's counterclockwise. And nothing's happening on that deck. Oh yeah, now I think we've got slipping belts a bit. But yeah, that, that controller is, because it's upside down, it's pulling the tape onto the take-up reel, so that's correct. And yeah, we've got the head goes into a switch. Switch is what gets flicked, so that's probably the direction bit there. Oh yeah, I can actually move it manually, that's interesting. I can't see where the actual switch's lever is. It goes downwards into that plate, probably. But we weren't getting anything, the CD player wasn't too happy and this isn't happy so I wonder if we could be missing 12 volts or something or oh, that could be nothing to do with it, we've got some very cheap open slide pots there radios down in there a fairly decent looking amp chip in there but they put so much white paste everywhere I can't even start to read what that is being a Sanyo, it could be a Sanyo chip or it looks a lot to me like a TA or something, Toshiba chip. It's been a long time since I've even seen one in that sort of flat package. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm seeing a T come out, or am I imagining things? Yeah, no, it does say, I can see, see the toss of Toshiba, I think. And yeah, TA something, 8 something. Probably will be an 8 something in this era. I don't wipe it off. 822. Is that a 9? Might be a Toshiba 8229. Might even have a 1 after that. Maybe they had 5 digit numbers by then. We've got some code stamped onto this deck. That's a kind of sneaky of Tennyson because often they didn't mark their stuff. But that's a smart way of getting your brand out there, I guess. Not that most people would even know what it is, but at least you've got your little molding into the plastic there so i guess i might have a quick look where's the actual oh that's the motor switching some of these little switches so oh, maybe there's one up there because it's a dual deck they might better tell the other deck to start up when one goes we've still got a record playback switch so they did use them quite late into some of these things ta8189 i wonder if that's the same as the one i had in that samsung boombox which didn't have a record playback switch anymore. I think, was that a beat switch or something sticking out the bottom for the radio? Beat cancel, yeah, that changes the oscillator. I guess it will be in the tape deck because it changes the tape deck oscillator frequency so it doesn't interfere with the radio. I'll have to look this up online. Senyo Fine CAD. Or Senyo, and I guess Fine CAD is what they used, I don't know. It's a few stamped on things, but it doesn't say much. Someone scribbled their quality control maybe on there in blue pencil or something. So maybe I need to clean, maybe the mode switch could be the first place to start, because if that's dicky on the audio, it could be dicky on the actual voltage switching to various parts of this thing. Probably not, but that can be the sort of thing causes these type of issues. Needs cleaning anyway, so I might as well start there. Now, it certainly could be that we're missing 12 volts or something in this thing, which is affecting CD and cassette. You never know. I'm pretty right to plug that in and try it out. Find the power side. Ah. Where's the CD display? Do we have anything lit? Oh yeah, we've got a red light. Oh yeah, CD's doing something. Where's the switch? The fact that it centers a laser would suggest 
We do have voltage there. Bit hard to see if that laser's lining up, but I'm sure it would be. I'm yet to see one that doesn't. But I don't want it anywhere near my eyeballs too much, but you've got to look on a bit of an angle. I cannot see a light coming out of that one, so maybe I'm just not looking on the right angle. So tape decks, dead as. I don't think we have to be in any particular mode to make them work. And I guess if the radio is running, we must have voltage to a fair bit of this. Oh, I'm going to poke around those switches. And see if we've got any voltage. I'm not sure if the decks, well they were grounded, I think that's probably a ground wire hanging out there. They may still be grounded. Oh, we've got 12. 12.9 volts there So that's there. So have we got it at the motor? Yeah, we've got 12 volts We've got 12 volts 12 volts and I was actually expecting 12 volts there, but no, maybe the motor's dead. I think they're just the speed things we've got 12 volts and ground so Surely I've got a dead motor So much for Sanyo cassette player motors if that's the case that's very surprising, but admittedly I haven't touched a lot of these things with Senyo motors in them, but normally these motors are the last thing to go in anything. Yeah, we know it's free. Is there any point taking the belts off to see if that... I don't think they're real ten high tension anyway, I think they've had their day a bit. Because I was rotating the capstone and nothing was happening to the other thing. Oh, did I just see a... This one that just oh yeah something's happening when I press the button. That motor's ever so slightly turning. Oh, did I get a bit of? Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, it's it's dying under load. It's got no power at all. Interesting. I think we can say the voltage is feeding it. Then are good. Yeah, give it a push. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. So. Got a nice tennis and mech, but the motor on it is not very good at all by all of it. So no wonder we didn't see many Sanyo cassette player motors, I guess, because they're not very good by all of it. I might even be able to undo this without taking the mechs apart, because usually these motors are on a sort of bracket that holds the two halves together. And you don't really want to pull them apart if you don't have to. I think we can just get it off. I don't think we can get the screws necessarily out, but at least we can get the motor off the back of them. Is that out yet? Oh, there it is. Well, one thing I can probably do is actually unplug some of this stuff. Oh, yeah, they're going to, are they glued in there? Why do you glue them in there? I guess to stop them getting pinched in the factory or something, so it's probably a good idea, but. And chances are no one's ever going to touch it anyway. Let's unplug this from the unit. Oh, probably should turn the power off first. Bit slack there. And we've got a belt dropping out. Yes, it's got a big long belt on one side and a short, well, just pretty much a standard tension belt maybe on the other. With a standard little reel belt in both probably. Yeah, this deck's kind of flimsier or less substantial than I thought. Don't know why, a lot of their auto reverse decks are a bit more solid in a way, but it's, I guess it's all it needs to be. Is it actually built on the same chassis as that? No, it's definitely a different stamping. Yeah, oh well, that's kind of interesting. And let's get this motor out and have a look. Yeah, let's say it doesn't really spin very well. Could it just need a lube? Well, I guess we could actually try repairing it for the hell of it. Might as well have a look inside this thing. Cause that tape's not going to come off on that end. Why don't I just cut it, I think. Let's get the end of it off. And it should just be these little... Do I need smaller cutters than that or do I need a big ones? Usually just these little metal 
four little metal bits have been sort of stamped in a bit and if you can remove that bit of metal hanging over the edge you should be able to pop the back off it you could almost probably force it off it's not much there holding it not pretty good for your side cutters really but they are often the best tool for this sort of thing I could just try putting some oil in there I guess but shouldn't really leave it against the circuit board yet because I broke it but what else can you go against yeah they're really whoops I snapped it right off no great loss but this is a, yeah this is a glued in or something oh god that doesn't look good <laughs> looks like that transistor's been heated to yeah my god I think that transistor's been cooked that sort of varnishy stuff around it, well it's an IC, oh yeah one of the pins is actually fried well I don't like it when I break things like that but I knew there was a risk of it happening but it didn't matter anyway because I think this thing's well and truly cooked because you've got yeah that varnish, that looks like when a IC or something has spewed its guts out you get this sort of varnishy stuff and black and little dotty bits that's a pretty common sight and that pin there looks completely black that's like solder that's been superheated and like fried flux on there and stuff well that could have been the contents of the chip but I think that chip is very strange for it to cook like that but maybe the motor windings are gone or something should be a little A in and there it's a brown colour so that's yeah, guaranteed that is cooked what's it saying it's not an A in I don't think it's a C C or D Yeah, C1470 LM and 43 9M. So, and it's got a Sanyo on the circuit board under there. Little Sanyo symbol, that circle with a little triangle bits in it. And then what's it say? Something, oh, the RU mark, whatever it is, or the backward R thing, whatever that approval rating thing is, and then T002. Oops. I just broke more of the board or at least broke the connection to that chip does this thing lift out or do we need to unsolder it off the motor probably need to unsolder these two things but something is coming what is coming then I don't think anything should come <laughs> is that pulling on the motor I might take that pulley off we're gonna have to recycle that anyway Oh, that's just the outer bit. Why this side is normally soldered, I thought, to the motor. Ah, it's the brushes, of course. Probably didn't do them much good dragging them off like that, but they are the ones that sort of, yeah, there's a little plastic washer that they catch on, so they're not the best. Coils look all right. We could even measure those out of interest. There'll be some sort of low resistance, I guess. The light always ruins a multimeter. I can see a wire there. Might be easier to go to those than the little this this is like split into three poles or something. This little metal bit here is where the brushes touch and there's little gaps of insulation there, but we can just go across the actual terminals here, it's probably even easier. 2.4 ohms. I'm not sure if they're all connected together or what's the story. I think they are that. 2.1 ohms. 4.3 ohms. We're probably back to our original 2.1, I think. So I'm not really any of the wiser to be honest, but they don't look cooked or anything. That's a bit of sort of ohmish. They're not like zero ohms, which you'd think it was a shorted winding. And oh yeah, we have to unsolder that if we want to get this plastic bit off to look. There are, there's a trim pot in there and some other components on the other side, probably a capacitor and other bits. But I think maybe that chip's just self-destructed or maybe someone put the batteries in backwards. Yeah, who knows with the history of this. Someone putting the batteries in backwards could be enough to fry a motor like that or something. Got a nice little magnet in there. Oh, if it sticks in it's not that good. 
well, I thought I guess the weight of the engine the motor means it slides off so I think that can go in the dumpster we know what it is counterclockwise probably should keep that back bit counterclockwise 12 volts so I have to see if I've got something to suit that I think 12 volt motors you usually find in the you must have to recycle that bit of wire 12 volt motors are usually in in hi-fi decks and stuff ones that run off 240 volts so they should be plentiful in theory but a dual speed one I'll have to have a look after and see what we got I can't really do a lot with this deck without it but that's the deck up close so this is our 1059 or what's called a 591 when it's in combo and when you buy it, bought it off them I guess with another deck attached if you were doing a dual deck unit so yeah two little oscillating bits with a little wheel that rotates around and these little pieces these have actually got springs on them so they're a bit different to the one in this but these two little pins on the end of this thing there and there depend so they can go both directions if they press on this oscillating bit they stop it hitting whatever little piece in the cam there should be some little piece in the cam catches on this bit if it's still it's allowed to catch on it whereas if this thing's pressing on it it stops it catching on it basically yeah it's like a little concentric thing there i guess we have to go into actual play mode to get it to operate and we need to hold the reel still oh, well that's not going to work so easy is it or even yeah there it is a little pin so it moves up and catches that pin although i didn't catch it that time but i think I think these push it so it goes around this little circular piece on the outside so it sticks to the outside if that's not there they manage to move inwards and upwards where'd that little thing go I might not even be going the wrong oh, I think I'm going the wrong direction here because I can see there's a little cup on that bit that it should catch the pin the other way I think I don't know maybe it yeah it should come uh, it missed it so I think that's meant to catch in that yeah then this you can see this lever move across hopefully that's actually on camera and that's it and that's our TN21Z just got the normal little oscillating bit I'm gonna say our capstan yeah that's going the right way as long as that reel turns you can see this bottom part of that pins pressing if I turn it the other way like we're in rewind the other part of the pin presses on this bit quite a clever little design but if I push this thing out of the way even though the reels going it almost instantly stops now with this one we should get the same thing happen I'm thinking the auto stop should operate but of course this is an auto, an auto reverse deck so it doesn't necessarily auto stop it changes direction that's why the directions yeah, this side's operating and I don't think I'm doing a very good job I've got to hold it in a particular place so it doesn't touch it at all yeah, it's still I'm still allowing it to move a bit here it goes of course now when we spin the wheel the correct way we've changed direction and if we hold this one we should change direction again depending what auto reverse mode we're in and it may keep changing direction it may change direction once play the whole tape and then stop then go to auto stop yeah now we've gone back to the other side and i think if i switch i don't know where we switch modes on this thing or maybe this has just got one mode and it's permanently in it but of course the auto stop on this is more of a change direction thing there's a lot of oil on that belt but that might have just been because i had it let it get pulled underneath the deck so we're going to need a motor for that I'll have a quick look at this CD mechanism and see what's going on with that. Still not 100% sure the laser was actually lighting. Might just put a disc back in there. I don't know if that's magnetic or not. But here it is. You know, it just looks like plastic. It does have metal in there. Uh, which one's CD mode? That one, I think. Press the door switch. It did make a little noise like it was trying to read. I'm trying to spin, here we go. And we 
we've just gone back to zero. Don't think anything will happen when I press play. So the motors are turning and stuff. I think the laser must be definitely lighting up. Yeah, and that's it. So the laser's not happy, but given the amount of rubbish in it, I'd be very surprised if it was happy. May just need a good clean. I can see fur and stuff in it. I guess I'm gonna get that wipe with the brush before I even pull it out. Let's get the worst of the dust off the top. And I've got the power off, good. Ah, these connectors are really tight in these things and you've really got to hold the board to make sure you don't break the end off the board. That one does not want to come out at all. Is that one going to be lifted? Yeah, that's a lift up one. That usually has a couple of little pins in there that sort of hold it, but my god, it will not come out. Sometimes I always use a pair of side cutters or pliers or something. Side cutters aren't wide enough. Look, we've got a spring or something dropping off here. Springs on the posts. Sometimes you just gotta kind of, but this is right on a flimsy bit of circuit board. It's bending like anything. Here it comes. Sometimes you just gotta force it with some pliers or something. And just here, yeah, being very careful not to break the board if it's a flimsy one like that. I might take all these springs off and sit them on the post so I don't lose them. And these Senyo lasers, if it is a Senyo laser, were not the greatest. I think this is a later Senyo laser. You should be able to see it on the other side of you, I think. Yeah, definitely a Senyo. And wow, even this I can't read now. It's getting so small, the writing on it. Sanyo SF-P100, yeah, I think I remember changing these and things. I think they were one of their worst ones. They had a couple of other, I'm thinking something with a 90 on it or something. And maybe an 80, like an SF-80, SF-90, I can't remember exactly now, but they were not a particularly good laser. Fairly sure of, or at least, don't know whether I've changed them, I've at least diagnose them whether someone would have spent the money on it is a whole different thing but I do remember these I think these were a particularly expensive one too oh, this has got the little press a bit of plastic at the end and the slide bar will then move do we have to lift it up or anything or can we get the laser there's enough rain it does come out the end so it's good the laser should now come out And there's a bit of fur in the side of the lens still, which didn't want to come off. Oh, it's actually on top of it. It's stuck to the coil there, I think, while look at it, so that probably isn't causing any issues. Look, there's some strong magnets in that thing. Oh my God, you forget how strong the magnets can be in lasers, but that's ridiculous. Let's just grab my pliers and pull them down, see if we can get that on my finger in here, that's it. Let's get rid of that. I get a feeling these may be the ones too that are... Because there's like a gap down either side of this coil. There's no plastic. There should be plastic over these bits. So rubbish just falls down the sides. So I think these might have been one of the failure reasons in these might have been dust. Now I'm just going to work out how to get this plastic. It looks like it's clipped in there and clipped in from the front. And something at the back here. Can I just sort of prise that up carefully? Very, not as careful as I wanted to be. It sort of let go suddenly, but here you can prise it up at the back. And there's two little tiny super magnets or something there. They are super strong, those ones. And yeah, it's very hard to use a metal tool on this at all, but we've got to lift that up. And I don't know, I think the problem with these is you couldn't lift them up. There were some Samsung ones like this, you can't get lift them up to get to the prism. I get a feeling with a Samsung, I actually took this end bit, the whole coil bit off. Yeah, I think that's, we've got nothing to lose. I mean, it's a it's a stuffed laser, basically. And they are kind of self-aligning, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah, that's, I think, lifting. I'm pretty sure I had luck with a Samsung DVD player model that was like this. Now, for some reason, that's hanging in there. 
but you could actually remove the whole lens assembly is something holding that to the magnets or what is going on here it's like it's attached to the magnets because it's only like four sprung wires should hold this whole does not want to lift out I would have thought that should just lift up well that's another great design I think that's why these you just had to quote for a new laser something in there is holding that what on earth surely that should lift out is it just I think it's just very tight is it it pivots uh, you can undo these two this metal bracket bit but I wouldn't have thought you had to maybe we would need to I think we do but yeah for a precision unit you don't have to be as precision as you think although that's got a spring on it so there must be an adjustment in there for something maybe for the lens yeah unfortunately with this stuff it's just the parts are so expensive now they may not even be possible to get so you had to kind of improvise sometimes to try and get them going on parts that you should have just been throwing in the rubbish and replacing complete yeah what ours it's this plastic bits holding it in that's banging into this metal bits uh, it's obviously so it does actually have something to limit its range interestingly but we've got a prism right down in there and it does look a tad dirty but geez that's small hole and there is dust already around this area so that it doesn't take a lot down there to stop enough light getting in for the lens to, or for the laser to get enough light i don't know if it just you know could refract it off or reflect it off or whatever and i might do i don't know i can't get up in there i can do the outside of the lens which i haven't even done yet looks perfectly clean and nothing that i can see is coming off it you gotta be careful because it's on a little flimsy ribbon cable thing now can i gonna have to rip off a little bit of cotton bud or something and poke it down here or something i don't like the idea of putting a screwdriver in there i don't like putting too much of this down there because it's gonna well, it's not gonna come out again maybe if i ripped all that off there can i get that bit down there no <laughs> it's kind of going but is that deep enough don't think so it's way down there let's re-soak that in metho but not too much I'm just going to put a bit of fluff down there. I, I might even be able to hold on to this long piece like this. I really need something a bit softer, but I think that's between the screwdriver and the glass down there. Assuming it's glass, I'm pretty sure it is. Is that a little bit dirtier? Possibly. Oh yeah, now I'm getting a nice, a nicer glint on it. That looks like proper shiny glass. It wasn't so good before. It's still a little, it's got a coating or something on it. So it looks a bit rainbowy, also opalescent or something, not opalescent. I forget what the word is for when the glass and stuff goes rainbowy or oil on water, that whatever that effect is. I should know that from my bottle collecting stuff still, but I've completely forgotten what it's even called now. Now which side had the spring on it? I think it was the cable side. Iridescent. I think that's the word I want. Iridescent. Oops, spring fell off. Iridescent glass, I think. So they got like a... I forget what the actual coating was for now, but there is some sort of coating on the glass. Probably to stop light scattering so much or something. Or to remove certain wavelengths or I don't know. Well that's not going where it should. Look at that. Oh well probably because I've tightened the other one up too much maybe. Looks like this thing you can actually see it pivots in a little. So that's what the spring's for probably. I've tightened that one up so much that it's pivoted all to one end. So there is some sort of slant on the the lens versus the prism I guess and thus the lens versus diodes and whatever so I don't know how you're supposed to set that up or if they even tell you anything about it usually it's just done in the factory and left 
probably should have marked that metal bit. I think that'll push pretty hard on that to get the yeah the screw down far enough to go into the actual metal. I probably should have put a mark on the side, a little scratch from the metal to the plastic. But I wouldn't count on this having any sort of success. And even if I cleaned it, all this other messing around may have upset something. So yeah, this little cover's got little little indent in that gold bit of metal. That's where two little bits you've got to slot under, and then the other bits just click down where that other little hole in the metal is and that's our laser on the back there those three pins that's the laser power potentiometer so yeah slot that that side into the plastic so the plastic goes in that little forked bit or whatever it is and that should get that in there i'll just push that till it goes click because there's a little plastic you can't see it from the other side, I would have thought you could. Where is it? Oh, yeah, there it is. A little plastic piece, that's what I pressed down on. And the other side, it allows that bar to slide out. I've got a gear to put back in. That's it. Screw that back in, and we'll see if we've got any luck with it. Probably not, but... And I've got my springs here, I should really clean that dirt out of there anyway, I think. Might as well screw it back in because I'm not going to do any more with it than that, I don't think. Unless I can get my hands on another second hand laser out of something that I know works and the rest of the CD players are no good for anything. That was about the only other source. I don't think I ever had any second hand Sanyo lasers because they're all faulty basically, and every second hand thing I got my hands on that had a Sanyo laser in it. I think about the only ones that still go, some of those old CDC CD players or something are a bit bit better quality than those, I think, the early ones, but the later ones were pretty hopeless. Let's see if we at least get the laser to come back in. And it's looking, probably not finding, but it's looking at least. And it's just as bad as before, if not worse. No, I've killed it. Not even trying now. Oh, that's a shame. Laser's on. I didn't leave anything unplugged or anything silly, did I? Do not put that connector back in, let's just double check that it's definitely in place because sometimes these won't go right in. Yeah, I think it is. I'll probably just double check the other end isn't hasn't unplugged itself or anything, I don't think it did. Double check they're fully seated after you've been playing with them. Cast another connector that doesn't want to come apart and is trying to break things. Just double check that looks clean and everything. Try the old laser power tweak trick. If I can work out how to even turn this pot around. In fact, it looks like it's nearly at one end already. Yeah, I think someone's already turned that up. Possible they've turned it down, but normally clockwise is up. That's it. 
yeah that was close to the end of being fully cranked so yeah there's probably not much hope for it if someone's already turned the laser up high so I think we were working rubbish but I've never had any luck getting these ones to respond I don't think once they're dead they seem to stay dead But if you don't try, you don't find out whether you can actually do something with them. I could try adjusting it a bit, I guess, or something in case I've got it. Can't imagine. Yeah, I guess the alignment could be out enough. I don't think it's actually finding the disc at all, is it? It should at least. Nah, it sounds like it's just doing the laser search three times or whatever. Yeah, I think it's the same as when there's no disc in there. Yeah, so it's really not even finding the disc now. But you never have much luck with those things. Good thing I bought it for the Tanish and Mech. And not because I wanted a CD player. But that's why you don't buy these sort of things second hand. Unless you just want them for parts or something because they're generally not worth fixing. I'd steer very clear of any Sanyo CD player because it's bound to have Sanyo lasers in it and they're just trouble unfortunately. A lot of them I don't think work very well long before they actually die they always seem to be a bit a bit problematic and cause issues i never liked the things at all and they were and like i say expensive to replace too they weren't like the sony ones that were maybe 30 dollars or something they were more like the 80 to 120 dollars from is my memory of it i know they're expensive and yeah not something a customer would normally spend the money on so normally once you saw Sanyo laser and the thing was faulty you just didn't go any further with them basically because they were used in other brands which is a shame because I quite like Sanyo products they're normally pretty good but so far we've got a dead Sanyo motor and a dead Sanyo laser and like I say I suspect the motor may have been destroyed somehow but it could be an issue with them Okay, I've had a look around for a dual speed motor and I haven't got anything in any voltage basically which is kind of sad, I used to have lots of that sort of stuff lying around so I might have to keep an eye out for another boombox I don't think it's worth spending the money on actually getting a good motor for this I would like to see this deck in operation I guess the other option is maybe I'll just put a single speed in there Okay, I just put this on the power supply to test it and it seems to turn and not sound terrible or anything. This uh, was a 510ED2B counterclockwise. I assume it's the same speed, but I don't know for sure, but I'll have to change this pulley over as well. Yeah, I think that was the bottom side. This old one, you could probably well, got two belts in this, so you definitely can't use the old one. And it's a rusty old looking motor. I think it came out of the old TEC V33 or something. One I scrapped a while back after resurrecting it. Let's see if that looks about right. I don't think it matters which way the wires go. But since I haven't got a dual speed motor at the moment. And I did find out Wagner do sell the lasers for these. There's actually three types of those. Of the laser with the same number on them. And of course two of them are $50 I think and they don't fit this one one with a plastic ribbon cable type connector coming out of it so it's on the, it's just a little edge connector on a wiring harness oh, come on get in there another one has a little miniature connector I'll get a more modern sort of thing on the circuit board and the one I want for this one of course is $70 plus postage and whatever else 
which is not so bad if you're ordering other stuff at the same time so I won't, definitely won't be fixing the CD player unless another second hand one turns up and you know I don't think I'd ever use this unit for anything so there's no point fixing it, it was more just to get that mech and I was actually wrong the, the mech that's on the, the Tanishan website is the later one it's a 59 or 591 I think R which actually has a rotary or rotating head in it whereas these early 59 and I assume 591 would be the dual deck version have these fixed heads with a switch and a little ribbon cable so there's actually two versions of the 59 I forgot about there was a wrote the one they had on their website and I actually found a Sony I think in made in 2004 actually still used the 59R mech which basically looks all the same besides the way the heads mounted and stuff with the rotary bit and there must be some extra levers or whatever to rotate it probably a different this plastic bits probably a bit different but yeah as late as 2004 which I think was around the date that the Tanishan website disappeared And I think as early as 95, I think the Senyos around this sort of thing are more around the 1995 and I could, there's only so many manuals I could find with this mech in it, so I think Aowa used them as well. But mainly Senyo, Aowa and then that one Sony I found. But you know, there's hundreds and thousands of models out there, so who knows if I've even come close to finding all the ones. That's the bottom no, which one's the bottom one? Which has got the thicker pulley? That one. So we'll put the long belt on first. Actually, I think I had to change these belts, didn't I? That might be another issue. I might even see what size these belts actually are before I put an eBay one in there or whatever. It's a 46 for the short belt. Yeah, 77 must be about an 80 because 75 is too short, 85 is too long. So we'll pinch that together and shove it under there. There it is. Hook that over the bottom pulley. That'll be a lot easier, I think. Now I can just, uh, except it doesn't want to play the game. Put it over there, around that one, and we're in business. There are a couple of little idler belts, but I think they were quite good condition. Again, probably best to pinch it under and they always seem to bend the wrong way and catch on every single thing get that out of the top pulley and stretch it a bit so I don't lose it yeah now you can t turn one side we can't turn one side more of the case. Try to turn one side and the other side's holding it still. Got 13 volts, that's on this top wire which they say is ground, yes, and then B plus it's those two. Just make sure that isn't shorting on anything. And yeah, that's turning the right way. How do we change direction? I'll probably just hold it. Oh yeah, it changes direction. Beautiful. It's running the right way. We still don't know if the speed's correct. But so I can put this back together, I might just tape that up with a bit of insulation tape. Let's have a look at this mech operation. Oop, something's making a noise. That's our TN21N with a little wobbly lever. And yeah, both of these are wobbling. What's making that noise now? It wasn't making that noise before. Oh, the belt's actually too high still. I had that almost down to the motor, that pulley. It's the belt's scraping on the eject neck. If I lift, yeah, lift that up. So, yeah, that motor's not really compatible, I don't think, but anyway. Right now I know what it is, I'm not too fussed. But that may add a bit of wow to the system. We can see we go in one direction, we've got our two auto stop bits running there. That pin trailer almost looks engaged, but it's not, it's free. That one's engaged, of course, because it's spinning. 
if I hold this, why did that deck do something? Is it because of the dual mechanism part? I don't know. Oh wow. Or was that just doing that randomly? Maybe that's just catching how it is. What the? That shouldn't be running like that. That should be in idle mode. Ah, so we've got an issue here. I get a feeling I've seen these decks do that before, but it wasn't doing it before. That doesn't seem to operate in fast forward. Surely that should. Jeez, that's a bit dodgy. Are they bypassed in. Oh, very weird. Yeah, that one's just started being a pain. Doesn't do it when it's in play mode and operates. <laughs> Put in pause, it fixes it. sounding motor or it might be that belt scraping and the fact that this one keeps clicking yeah, it's done it I don't know how did the pause turn off it must be something to do with this other deck Boy. shut up yeah the auto stop doesn't seem to work in fast forward and rewind. You would think with all that extra auto stop mix stuff there. And I'll just play it. Play it. See if it auto changes on its own. Oh, the, where's the direction LED's gone? Are they on this thing? Oh yeah, they're these ones I think. So going that way, and that's the other direction, and it should get through the leader tape. Yeah, it sounds like it just got to the end. Man, our noise went down, so soon we're on the leader. God, how long's the leader? Quite long. Very long. Don't know why they made them that long, it's crazy. So rather a lot of wow in there, which is what I remember that motor being like. You set these decks up to play and pause. Oh, but that's the record deck. Oh yeah, no, that would be right. You put that in record with pause fitted, and then when you press play here, yeah, pause comes off. Now yeah, that's not clicking. And now it is. Ah, now it isn't. <laughs> it's a bit. Depends on which position you put the deck in, it seems. Yeah, it's a bit random to say the least. I, I know I've had this fault in these mechs before, and I can't remember what causes it. Play um, moves this metal piece. Oh yeah, the whole gear comes down, and oh, of course that's the gear that connects to the to the reel. And the reel starts turning and pushes on it now. When that's not connected, that still keeps turning, but it's disengaged. It's got to be something about the position of it or something, doesn't it? Very hard to know what's going on there. Now it doesn't want to do it. That should just freewheel without. That's making it click a little bit, but not like it was. Oh, there we go. Well, 
So when that's up, obviously it's in a different position when it's in play mode. So it shouldn't Yeah, just the slightest touch, so it could be something out on that lever. Maybe something's a bit warped. So this may be an issue this thing had long before the motor died in it. The gravity seems to trigger it. Pressing the stop button even stops it. Might just disconnect that deck altogether because it's the belt scraping. Let's see if the other deck sounds any better, which it probably won't. Oh, I haven't even given this thing a clean. Ah, oh, no speakers. <laughs> Weirdly, it's now gone high speed just from taking another belt off, or well, surely not. Take the belt off the other deck and the speed goes up. Was that just some coincidental thing happened? That's... No, it's fine now. Maybe slightly less wowy, but why did it suddenly go high speed? Now it's back to normal. There's like two meters of leader tape there. Finally onto the actual tape. Still nothing, still nothing. So the actual tape has like... Not beautiful, but yeah, definitely better with that other belt off. Now... Oh, the head's perfectly clean on that side and that side. Capstans are fairly dirty, but... That could add a little bit of wow, but anyway, at least... Got that far with it. I was suspecting that motor wouldn't be real good. I probably there is a new one around here somewhere I probably could have put in, but anyway, that's enough for now to get this thing running. I've seen it operating. Yeah, there's something dicky in this TN21Z deck. I know I've had that issue before where they click when the other deck's running, and what on earth is going on there? There's a spring there. That spring isn't right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. I remember something. That, I think is that spring on the wrong side. Uh, it's that bloody spring though. It's something to do. I have to find another ten. Have I got another ten twenty one? Yeah, I, I vaguely remember something to do with that spring. I get a feeling it's meant to be on the other side. Of this little clicky bit. I'm pretty sure when you put that spring on the wrong side or it gets out on the wrong side that can cause issues because it's not doing it it's more like the other end of it oh yeah the other end of it's loose I think is that what it is I can see something pop up there feels awfully loose yeah that's what that ah oh, that's oh is that what pushes the tension onto it oh, maybe it's meant to be loose and now it's got to, oh, so that pushes it up in pause mode. Take the pause off and it, now it doesn't do anything, but the thing still springs up. I've got a feeling something to do with that. I've had issues. So we put in pause mode, it, yeah, it pushes, so the pause pushes up now, so that's maybe, that would make sense. So it's whatever is lifting this in this mode, there must be another spring somewhere. See, one under, how do we clip these off again? I've forgotten. 
That should unclip somewhere. And that's the issue, I haven't worked on one for so long. There's a little tiny screwdriver. There's a clip there somehow. Problem is, if you do it wrong, you're gonna break the bloody thing, probably. Oh, do you press through there and that gets it off that bit? But yeah, something to do with the spring on here. Yeah, there it is. I got it. So that spring then. Is that on the wrong side or something? Doesn't look it. Does that have to be up? Oh God, I can't remember now. Uh, is it something pressing on that? This one it clips in. Yeah, that's a little clip there. So you do just squeeze it that way. You've got the pivoting bit and then you've got another pin. Now which side of it did the bloody spring go on is the next question because it needs to push it up, I think. I think you've got to pull that across. Possibly you even got to lift it over this little bit here. That might be, is that the key? Yeah, I've got that right across now. So I think if we get that on the other side of this little metal lever here, so that metal lever might have something to do with it. So the spring's up above it. We clip this back in place. Oh, we've got to get the end of it under this other little bit, the bottom end there, or oh, right side end. And then you put that over there. That's definitely got something to do with it, I think. Pause. Ooh, what? <laughs> what have you done to it? Oh, when the pause is on now, it turns off, so I don't think I've done it right. Okay, does it play out when I do the other side though? Yep. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you touch that. Yeah, uh, I play allows it to slide more that way, I think. Yeah, well, now it's not doing it. And there it goes. As soon as you touch that, I think it's it's definitely that spring though. Something in that spring. That works. Yeah, the pause should. Oh, the pause presses on that other spring. I did the th one thing I didn't want to do. Of course, when I took this off. I let this spring get to the other side where it shouldn't be. That's why the pause doesn't work. Or at least partly off. Going under you go, where are you little? That's it. That should fix that. Yeah, so now pause works fine. We've still got the issue though that it clicks. And the other mode, when the other deck's playing. So it could be this lever's not coming across or something. Just the slightest, I'm going to bend that spring slightly. It's just the tiniest touch on that thing and it stops. Shut up. I think if I get that spring, uh, how am I going to do it though? Pull that up a bit and we'll just bend it. If I can get hold of it here. If I can, yeah, that's it, it's got a little bend in it. See if that does a job. Stops. Pauses. Run that side, nothing. So I'll just put a slight bend in that slight bend in that little metal spring where it comes up so it bends towards that so it's the same as being pushed further this way. 
but it was sitting a bit high when I first tried it and it was still clicking. Now it seems to behave itself. I guess the only real test is the put it back together test and if it still works when you put it back together it's probably fine. So far so good. If you can put it that far back together. Well I think I fixed that clicking issue. Don't know for sure but I'll give that a bit of a clean up, put it back together. I think this might just be a parts boom box we're all it's really good for. So thanks for watching.